professional because believe it or not, that says a lot to the person who's about to interview you. Cool? All right. And show up early. Not too early, but always show up early. In fact, Chris, I do this in every class and I'll never stop my guess. Write this down. When it comes to delivering early, this is a formula that teaches us why you buy stuff. How did you rationalize that? Why did you buy it? Okay? B stands for, throw out some words. B words. B, what is it? Value. Good word. Value. This is a value formula. Before I ever called up this Holiday Inn here to stay here on the weekend with my kids and my wife, I had a certain E word. What's that word? Expectation. expectation. Very good. I had a certain expectation on how they would deliver. Okay? On a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being super stellar, what do you think most people are thinking of when they say, Holiday Inn at the university, I expect uh, and 10 is as good as it gets. What do they expect? Five. Why a five? Because it's not like, we're not like a five star, four star fancy hotel that's going to be Right. Uh, Plus it's the same student. I, I, give, I give like days in a five, I give us at least a six or a seven. Is that fair? But it ain't a 10, is it? Why? Because society, we have been conditioned not to expect over and above. If somebody just tries, we're impressed. When I have eight hours of training time with a, with a class, especially front desk, I'll ask somebody in the audience to come on up front. She has no idea why, but I pay everybody cash to do this. And all right. So when is the last time somebody blew you away with phenomenal stellar service? Anywhere. It could be a barber shop. It could be a salon. It could be a spaghetti. It doesn't matter. Where? What happens? What typically happens? I've probably done this a thousand times. What happens? Crickets. Crickets. Uh, 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 I can't think of any time. Nope, you're not getting off the hook. I paid you. Na, na, na. Okay, I got one. Okay, good. TGI Fridays. Really? What happened to TGI Fridays? Well done. We walked in and the hostess was super friendly. You're kidding. No, she was. And they sat us down right away, and the waiter came up and gave us water right away. Water? Give you water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and mentioned all the entrees and the specials, and the food came out fast, and it came out hot, and he was super friendly, and the bill came on time. Done. Ten. What is she really saying, people? You got what you were supposed to get. And when we get what we're supposed to get, we're impressed. Imagine if we, what's the D word? If we delivered, delivery, if we deliver more than people expect. So this being a Holiday Inn is a seven. Let's say that's the mental set of the caller. And instead, when they call this hotel, we answer the phone, and how many rings are less? Two. Three it is. And we have an approved greeting, it's not just, Hi, Holiday Inn, nah, 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 this is me. No, it's Holiday Inn will we guarantee satisfaction or something like that that stands out a little bit. Not a big, long thing, but a little thing that says to the caller, wow, this isn't just a Holiday Inn. And they were friendly, and they tuned me in, and they turned me on. And, and on a scale of 0 to 10, it was you. What's your name? Ellie. Ellie. Ellie, you turned me on, you tuned me in, you did a phenomenal job. Give me a number, Ellie. You were a? 10. You were a 9. nine. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because we're never a 10. If I had time, I'd tell you a story about the time that I thought I was a 10. If I have time, I'll tell it to you later. Remind me, okay? And found out I wasn't a 10. It took me a year to figure it out, but, but I found out I wasn't a 10. I'm never a 10. I can always be better. You can always be better. So the best we could probably hope for is a 9.1, 9.2 kind of thing. But the bottom line is you always deliver more than people expect. And when you do that, you drive an L word. What is the L word? Loyalty. Write that down. Loyalty. When you get into your jobs, when you're coming to class, you're delivering more than your professor is expecting you to deliver. You'll generate loyalty between the professor and you. You're working a little bit harder than everybody else. I appreciate that. Okay? So, 
driving loyalty. Three things happen when your consumer is loyal to your business. Number one, they will only use you. Okay, they'll only buy from you. Number two, do we have enough money in advertising for this hotel or any hotel? Do we have enough money in advertising? No. Never. No business has enough money in advertising. There's always stuff they want to do, but they don't have the budget for it. The best form of advertising is word of mouth. Word of mouth. Say it again. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Coming from a third party who has nothing to gain over recommending your business is a lot more credible than you and I put together. As good as we are, that's a lot more credible. You want that word of mouth. And number three, they have, uh, they're much more forgiving. Let's put it that way. They're much more forgiving, okay? <laughs> Something's gonna go wrong on my stay. The food was cold in the breakfast, the hostess didn't come on time. Something's gonna happen. And when it does, if your consumer is loyal to you, they're gonna say, all right, I'll mention that to Chris and he's gonna fix it because that's just what Chris does. I'm not gonna worry about it. That's loyalty. You want loyalty between you and the professor. You want loyalty between you and your boss. You want loyalty between you and your consumer. Drive loyalty. And this is one way to drive loyalty, to deliver more than anybody expects, okay? Be here at nine o'clock. What time do you get there? 8.45. Um, da -da 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 -da. You do more, you do more, you do more. Even if it's just a little bit. Your mission is to improve the experience with every time you contact that person, make contact with them, okay? So, dress for success, show up early. The interview, let's talk about the interview. If you don't do well in the interview, you're not gonna get hired. I don't care how smart you are. And I've interviewed a lot of people, and I trust me. Everyone uses the same adjectives and superlatives. Oh, I can do this, and I can improve that, and I'm good at this, and I'm good at that. Well, guess what? There were 40 other people that said the same darn thing. So how are you gonna stand out amongst all that? If you have, how many of you worked in a hotel or currently work in a hotel, raise your hand. For you guys, you have an advantage, but you have to get smart in terms of Return on investment, ROI. You ever heard those letters before, ROI? Okay, so you're working in the front desk or where are you working? The front desk. Front desk. What you want to be able to do is to say, I want to learn how to drive the satisfaction scores. Give me some skills that I can use. Uh, I want to be able to convert more inquiries into reservations. How do I do that? So now it's time for you to interview. And I say to you, okay, tell me about you. Oh, I got this degree from the University of Memphis. Okay, that's great, so does everybody else. Uh, what else you got? Well, I worked at the front desk. Okay, so everybody else. But here's what we did at the front desk to raise the satisfaction level. In fact, we were at a 3.2, we got it to a 3.6, focusing on these three things. When you can become that specific and that smart and that knowledgeable, you're gonna impress this person. Does that make sense? Now, for the rest of you that aren't working in a hotel, you've got to dig down deep and you've got to figure out the thing that you do that makes you stand out. And what would impress me is, uh, just this is me, it's not everybody, but I love honesty. I am a sucker for honesty. I'll be honest with you, Don. I did this and this and this and it was a big mistake and I learned not to do that again. I would love that. I love people who are honest, okay? First employee I ever hired out of 383, first employee I ever hired came in, we're in the dining room in Cincinnati at, at Marriott, uh, we're sitting there having breakfast and he says, okay, let me start off. Uh, I've had a nervous breakdown, I'm a reformed alcoholic, and da 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 <laughs> First words out of his mouth. And I said, George, does this typically work for you? He said, well, I figure you're gonna find out anyway, so why not be honest about it? Oh, he had me, hired the guy, okay? And it was a smart hire. Um, so. Where was I? What was the last thing I said besides smart hire? What was I focusing on? Uh, honesty. 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 Okay, the interview. That's what we're focusing on. The, the interview. Okay? So for those of you that don't work in the hotel business, you've got to find that thing. If I knew you were working two jobs and going to school full time and you were doing uh, stuff with the uh, Humane Society, that's impressive. Okay? You're a worker. People that are going to hire you, I don't care what position it is, they're going to look for a few things. Number one, they're going to look for body language. And part of that is the way you dress, okay? They're going to look for body language. Why? Because it's the most 
memorable thing about you with everyone you come into contact with? We have three variables. Body language, tone, <laughs> and words. And by far, the number one face-to-face -face important thing to do is to have the right body language. You've got to be able to make an impression on that person. High energy. We're a high energy business. We're looking for fun people that can roll with the punches, who can multitask. That's the kind of stuff your interviewer is looking for. So cut, cut out the mold of all the way that you've ever seen anybody else interview and find new adjectives and find new superlatives and get specific on the stuff that you did at your jobs and things you did in school to raise scores, make service better, whatever it is, but get tactical, okay? Any questions on that? Moving along, number four, prefer to serve, how did I word that? And not be served. To serve and not be served. Go back to the interview. Go back to me looking at all these opportunities to hire one person out of all these people. I'm going to look for the person that truly loves to serve because it's fun, because it's the right thing to do. It helps humanity. It helps the business. It helps a bunch of people. I like that. That's important to me. Okay. So typically when I show up at like some sort of fundraiser or somebody says, hey, you're an honored guest, I hate that. I'd rather be serving food and throwing away garbage and, and working kind of thing. 